Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the Awakening Cosmic Reality Show with the host, Alina Kapolnik. Glad to have you on today. Hi, Alina. Thank you for bringing me on. Um, the last time that we communicated, you were actually on my show and it didn't get aired because of the horrible recording through, um, I think, my internet connection. I tried a, a different internet connection. It just didn't work out. And I was so booked up, and so we had the brilliant idea, well, why don't you just start your own show and have me on your show? So here I am. Welcome. You're a <laughs> wonderful you. person, and um, I wanted to ask you some questions about your work with in 5 d your holistic coaching, um, and your other initiatives that you are involved with right now. So um, can I begin by asking you how you came here into this process of awakening? Okay. Well, um, I think you cut out just a little bit, but I don't know if that's um, my um, internet connection or yours, but we'll, we'll see how this comes out. Yeah. So um, basically my awakening started in uh, the year 2010 although I've always been uh, a very uh, observant type person as a child. I would watch everything going around me going, what is wrong with these people? What's wrong with this world? And I was very sensitive and, and uh, could, could pick up on other people's energies. But at the same time, I could, uh, I could also affect other people's energies, um, helping them to raise their vibration. As I, I wasn't aware of what I was doing at the time, um, now, when I look back at a lot of things in my life, I see that that was a um, gradual awakening. And I think the, um, uh, I could have had a lot easier awakening experience than I did, but it ended up being pretty much a slam type thing because I went, uh, I chose a particular path that took me uh, to being in the corporate world and actually in the oil and gas industry and not realizing at all what I was contributing to uh, for the raping of the planet of uh, her fluid and her blood and her natural resources and the whole um, illusion created around the need for oil on this planet. So um, that really wasn't what woke me up, but when I did have my awakening, which was the feeling of desperation and emptiness and sadness and depression um, and not understanding when I had achieved everything that people think that you should achieve with your career, with your family, with a marriage, with money, with everything. Why was I not satisfied? And would it ever end? Would this feeling ever end? And just crying out and asking. I didn't believe in the biblical God. Never did that. Never. I never felt good about religion. But I did believe that there had to be something out there. And um, that came about from reading about past life regressions. After first learning about ghosts and that there are beings in another dimension, that intrigued me. But then the past life regressions and um, near-death experiences pretty much proved that there was um, a creator of this experience. So that got me on my awakened path. Um, I ran into Greg Prescott at a conference in October of 2013. And we became very fast friends and partners from that point from that weekend that was it we worked we've been working together ever since and I started writing articles about my truth and my experiences and my um, I, I liked uh, to take the woo-woo approach you know meaning that uh, wow I mean if my family were to read any of it they'd probably go she's lost her mind <laughs> and, um, and that's okay but I have a very creative imagination and uh, I began doing a radio show for N5D called The Cosmic Awakening Show, which is very similar to, the na to your name of your show. And that's okay. I encourage everyone to make it what it, the vibration that they need to have. So uh, no, 
no uh, foul at all in that oh, respect. <laughs> thank you. It uh, took me a while to figure it out. And I'm just, the awakening part is a huge part of my life. And the cosmic is a huge part as well. And the reality is even bigger. So just three words that mesh together and, and nothing else fit. So it just kind of called itself what it wanted. Yep. Basically. That's yeah, that's very cool. And I'm really I'm really proud of you for for putting yourself out there on on camera and doing this. Um, it, it takes um, a little bit of centering and clearing to be able to lose the fear of speaking your truth and not worrying about what other people are going to say. But at the same time, not just doing it in an egotistical manner, but doing it with the hopes that your message will reach someone who really needs to hear a particular phrase that you say, maybe a key word or even just the vibration in your voice, just to remind them of home or help maybe to awaken them to who they are. So that's why I started my show. And um, I've really enjoyed interviewing other people. And it's um, been a trend lately that I've people are interviewing me. So it's I'm kind of getting practiced at talking about myself because I don't really I'm not really used to doing that well you were the one that inspired me to do this to do my show and to put out my website because when you interviewed me you said speak your truth get out there if you have a message get out there say it show it be you help the people in whatever way you can and that really inspired me to start doing this work so thank you well I'm glad you're welcome and I call out to everyone out there who's been even thinking about doing this and I tell them I'll be on your show <laughs> just to get people started because this is all about um, the more people that embody that source aspect of themselves and begin to speak their own truth um, without pushing it on other people and just allowing for co-creative communication uh, the, the faster we're going to change the collective consciousness into um, peace and joy and love and compassion and those things that we want to vibrate at. Exactly. Um, just be genuine in yourself and explore what's out there. Yes. I love your butterfly necklace. Oh, thank you. I, I thought I'd be a little blingy today. Usually I'm so plain looking <laughs> on my episodes today. I'm like, I'm going to put on some makeup. I'm going to look nice for Michelle. It's so funny, Elena, because today I'm not wearing any mascara, no eyeliner, um, no base makeup. And so I thought I would try to start it because you inspired me as far as the makeup thing. So it's so funny. You must have, you must have picked up on the makeup thing, but we got it a little backwards. But no, I'm really trying to um, inspire people to, um, to really be who they are and let's reprogram people's expectations of what someone who puts themselves out there in the media should be like mm -hmm. and just allow them to be yourselves because what I was doing is I was making I just started this N5D network video series as well that can be found on the N5D YouTube page and what would happen is I would think of a topic and then I would be, be like, crap, now I got to get in the shower, fix my hair and put my makeup on before I can sit in front of the camera. So I'd be in the shower and that's when a lot more information comes to me. So get out of the shower and I write everything down really quick and then have to stop and put my makeup on. And then when I'm done, you know, take my makeup off because I like to be able to wipe my eyes and I mean, that's just natural. Women shouldn't be wearing mascara and eyeliner and stuff. But, you know, you should be able to rub your eyes and, you know, sleep and everything without it, you know, smearing down your face. So anyway, I was talking to Greg a couple of days ago and I said, you know, I think I'm just going to start doing more and more videos with less and less makeup and see how it goes. Um, you know, it's really, I really know in, in Egypt, um, you know, the accentuation of the eyes was a very powerful thing. And I love putting on eyeliner. I love putting on makeup, but I've, I've been wearing less and less of it. And the makeup that I do use is all organic, by the way. Um, 
because makeups have, um, most makeups are petroleum based and just have an immense amount of toxins in them. And we're taking them in through our skin. And my goodness, we're putting them on our eyes of all things. So, um, but I, I do like to dress up and wear makeup, but now I'm, I'm really um, trying to, to get an in-between, so to speak. Oh, that's wonderful. I usually don't wear makeup because my eyes are so sensitive to mascara and stuff. I have hypoallergenic mascara. So I, I, this is a treat for me. I don't do it every day. And I'm not going to look like this on every <laughs> show, YouTube show that I do. So this, I just wanted to look different today. So I just thought I'd put on some mascara and that's all I did. I didn't do anything else. Oh, well, I can... It does accentuate your eyes and you do look beautiful. Well, thank you. You look beautiful as well in your natural look. I, I thought you had makeup on. I couldn't tell. I do have some eyeshadow on, but no uh, liner or um, mascara. And I do have a little bit of powder because my, my face, like when I'm out in the sun, I try to go without sunglasses, but sometimes at the beach with the white sand, it just gets so bright. So I have raccoon eyes. So I put a little bit of, of a powder it's a, um, it's a, it's a mineral powder and it has like the reds and yellows and whites mixed in mm -hmm. and green, I think. And it just, it just evens out the, the, the base of your, it makes everything kind of blend in a oh, little bit of blush, but it's wonderful. It. Looks natural. Gorgeous. I ah. like it. Well, so it worked. Okay, great. So <laughs> thank you. I, I'm, I'm now blushing and embarrassed, but. Now, um, my uh, tie-dye um, background here, uh, I don't get to use that very often because we do have a dog, and um, this is in um, our dining room, and uh, he barks um, sometimes. Not a lot. He's doing really well. We just moved. This is one of the first things I did is put this up, but I have another purple one in the, in the bedroom that sometimes I use for some of my videos, but... Um, now, I like to bring uh, high vibrational colors into the situation and, you know, into whether I'm having a counseling, counseling session or a radio show. So, so back to N5D. Um, yeah, I've expanded into the videos, which is, took, took me um, a lot of fear to process, uh, worrying about uh, how I would look and uh, what people would think and... Um, really letting go, letting go of the whole process and not doing this for any other reason other to just share um, my thoughts and experiences. And it's, I'm just, I feel so grateful that so many people are supporting me and, and asking me to continue, you know, to continue. Um, and I hope to be able to do um, more um, Skype interviews like this, like you and I are doing. Um, I'm very technologically retarded, so uh, I will have to learn how what program <laughs> to use to record it and everything. Try so, VAR. It's very good. Try VAR. Yes. Right. E, e V A E R. Oh, e -R. Yes. Okay. E -R. Um, it's good one on one. If you do want to do um, multiple videos, like like have a panel of four. You have to record it separately. There is a, there's side by side. There's also separate set where it records it in separate files, but then you have to blend it in in Movie Maker. I, I'm, oh, a, okay. I'm a little afraid to try that one. So in yesterday's interview, I had a panel of three other people with me. So two people got recorded on the camera and the two other were just floating voices. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, it turned out the way it is. I'm going to just post it and not worry about it. Yeah. It's okay. And I know, I know Hangouts, you can do that too as well. That's what my friend Kelly Coffee uses. And I hope to be able to do panels very soon um, and direct interviews on video. Um, well, I mean, I'm sharing, just sharing my own experiences here. I, I hope that people aren't just like, oh, that's boring talking about that. But really, when I'm on the radio... I get into such a state that, you know, I may be looking up here, you know, to the corner of the room and actually moving my focus away from the computer, moving my focus away from what's going on so that I can truly 
unconcentrate, so to speak, on giving a clear answer. So you really have to train yourself to actually look at the camera mm -hmm. and be able to do that. So it's, um, it's something you have to practice at, and I've, I've been practicing at doing that. So, um, but I usually like to keep notes on my radio show, and then I'm also checking the chat and things like that all at the same time. So really it helps if you have somebody who can do all that other kind of work for you, run your chat room and do things so you can completely um, focus on channeling your higher self and whatever collective that you're working with at the same time while looking straight into the camera and, and you know, focusing that way. So I have to learn to turn my focus a little off when I'm looking at the camera or at the screen in order to get myself into that place of connection, so to speak. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, I just came on, threw myself into it, didn't think about anything. First time I came on camera, I was reading notes right off the bat and looking like downwards and like, I don't, whatever, you know, the information got out. Everybody thought it was great. And I'm like, okay, well, next time, don't look at your notes. Have your notes on the computer screen, not on your tablet yeah. looking downwards. Look up. Look yeah. straight at the people, not not like reading down. So it, it's practice. It comes with practice and knowledge, I find. Yeah, you just got to do what works for you. Like I'll have a stand over next to my screen with, with my notes and, uh, uh, I did um, finally um, save up enough from uh, my sessions to get a new computer, and I have a, a new camera and a microphone to set up, a Yeti microphone, and so I'm really excited about that. Oh, yeah, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. so, hey, I'm gonna, I'm about to be professional, hey. <laughs> well, you so. sound great today, so it, it's just for the people to see what who we are and what we do here. It's wonderful. Yes, yes. and you know... Um, we've, I think all, a lot of us have been in hiding for a while and it's really nice to be able to hide behind a radio show without, you know, actually putting yourself out there. But what's going to be happening with these incoming energies, um, as, as they begin to crest into a larger wave is that, um, people are, are really going to be able to see other people's aura and energy and feel their vibration even more. So there really won't be any more hiding. You know, you've got to really be careful of your thoughts and owning your thoughts and making sure that they're yours and not some, uh, I guess, maybe other being or someone else putting thoughts into your head um, with criticism about other people. Because you could be looking at somebody and you'd be like, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, that shirt is maybe not the right color for her or something like that, right? And then that person's going to be able to read exactly <laughs> your thoughts. So <laughs> you, we've really got to learn now. Now's the time to uh, let go of your of things, judgments and thoughts that aren't yours because those really aren't yours. You are source and source would never say that or think that about someone else. That's part of the overlay, the matrix that is inserted into our reality. Mm -hmm. Well, I've noticed that when I'm sleeping, half of the planet, half of the people collective are talking and I can hear their voices in my head. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to sleep here, you guys. If, if you want to ask me something, do it telepathically in the morning or the day when I'm not sleeping or contact me via email, my website. So much people are telepathic and they're like chattering. I could hear 50% of the planet talking at the same time. And it's like, a billion voices in my head. I'm like, I want to sleep right now is not the time for this. Tone it down, turn it off. Cause I'm very, um, I'm an intuitive empath. So I pick up on everything that, that is around me all the time. And I've been hearing these people for two days in my head. And I'm thinking, is this maybe the cabal trying to trick me or the Illuminati? But then I'm like, these are genuine people's voices in my head. I used a bit of disconcernment to see what the voices were saying. I just, I guess I'm tuning in to the people's collective of the earth, what's going on. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, not now, not when I'm sleeping. Let's do this during the day when I'm awake. Well, what are you, what are you feeling? What are you hearing? Is it despair or is it excitement or is it a little mixture of everything? 
it's a mixture of everything really it's like um these guys are so excited about what's coming and i could hear it oh i could hear some noise somebody i hear that cutting the grass <laughs> oh well you know what whatever we'll still chat <laughs> nothing i can do it's about not that the loud grass. yeah <laughs> So I'm like, you know what? I'm just hearing them talking, really talking, and it's so excited and um, interested in what's going on on the planet and just talking about wave X, talking about awakening and what the planet is going through and what people are going through, really. So that that's what I was hearing from them. Do you think you're hearing people here in physical incarnation or do you think you're hearing um other beings as well that are observing i was hearing people in this physical earth incarnation just walking on their earth and talking to each okay. other yeah. wow yeah that's First so cool so you've kind of got your thumb on the heartbeat of the collective human consciousness so really that puts you in a very good situation in my opinion to influence that collective human consciousness through your you know I know through your radio show of course and through your voice but let's just say that um, you could actually consciously transmute some of those negative thoughts uh, because our, our collective human consciousness is, is just it started out I don't know 20 years ago 30 years ago if you measured it is it probably one big huge dark cloud you know black cloud because a lot of those thoughts weren't ours it was part of the programming to use us for negative energy purposes and then they take that um the beings that are you know that tried to take over the planet running the planet whatever take that um that energy thoughts are energy they took those thought forms and uh fed off of them but now we're what we're trying to do is starve them of that by being responsible for our thoughts and i actually just had a an, an implant removal uh session done and did a radio show last night with uh, on cosmic awakening show about that experience so it's called implant removal i just uploaded it to youtube on the cosmic awakening show youtube channel or and and my youtube channel for people but, you know, really there's an implant that I think um, we may get at birth um, because um, we make an implied contract when we want to come back into this body and supposedly um, transmute uh, or, or balance out karma, something that we did to somebody else in another lifetime, although... You know, when we did that and that lifetime to them, we didn't have a memory of who we were and all that. And then we come back and we don't have a memory. And so we make an implied contract to take a human body. We'll accept anything that comes with that body. And that includes these implants that these beings can plug into and steal our energy from and mm -hmm. create um, emotional trauma or trigger our emotional body so that we become disjointed and just erratic and you know, that's where negative emotions come from. So we're basically being used for energy, negative energy generators by having these, they're like in the, they're not really physical, although there can be physical implants. Those were more um, really placed by, um, uh, back in the 50s and 60s, 70s, before that program ended, but these are more etheric. These are multidimensional layered um, energy bodies placed in our energy, in our field, as, in that we have the emotional body as well. So a lot of them uh, exist there. Now, these can be transmuted um, by um, raising your vibration. These can be balanced out and not triggered by conscious thought and raising your vibration. But in this case, um, I had them completely removed, including one. That was my point, was the monkey mind. One where in the temples where I had really t tamed it a lot to where I didn't have a lot of extra thoughts coming into my head when I was meditating. All my thoughts were from my higher self, most of them. But if I were to let my 
aura get um, shrunk or cracked, um, that is an opportunity for the uh, trigger program to be able to work and put negative thoughts into my head and make me speak negative thoughts. So af I've noticed after this, even though I had transmuted it, you know, you have to be always on your toes and always working and it's very tiring and you get to that tiring place and that's when it breaks down. Well, I've noticed with this implant removal that um, I'm not having to work at that anymore. It gives frees me up so much of my own energy instead of battling myself to do other things. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And there's a lot of people that probably already know how to do this, actually physically remove the implants, but this is psychic surgery mm -hmm. and he teaches other people how to do it because we can all do it eventually on ourselves, but some of us don't have our um, psychic abilities completely um, tuned in enough to be able to find it on a multidimensional level where the energy is. The symptoms are there but we don't know where it is to be able to pinpoint and clear it. They're very crafty at where they've hidden them. Oh, yes. These guys, I had um, psychic implants near my uterus because I was bleeding out all the time and losing so much blood and so weak. So I tried my best to tone those implants down, couldn't completely remove them. I had to get my uterus out. I had a total hysterectomy. I'll be honest Me too. about it. Yeah. Me and too. It, I had the same problem as you. Yeah. And the reptilians, they were controlling those implants. Once I got the uterus out, no more problems. The implants got removed with the uterus. So I had to have physical surgery. I worked on myself and I toned down those implants, but at that time I couldn't totally remove it. And they were controlling me so I wouldn't do what I'm doing right now. So I'd be weak. So I got it removed and I'm scanning myself constantly. And I always hear these Speaking of, I, it's another confirmation that lawnmower cutting the grass, that sound just tr triggered for me because I hear different frequencies and tones in my ears. It's called titanitis, but it's not really titanitis. It's just upgrades coming in, right. light codes and DNA upgrades. And I can hear that and I can hear by the frequencies sometimes if something's going on, if somebody's trying to mess with my frequencies, I hear it through that. So that noise from the lawnmower was a confirmation. Bring that topic up. Talk about it. So, mm -hmm. Well, the next thing that happened after my implant removal was the next day, the gentleman who I was having the radio show with, um, well, I'll just say that I was sitting in my chair, and all of a sudden, I heard one of those high-pitched frequencies, but instead of a, being in a left ear or a right ear, it was right here in front of my third eye, and I I, I heard the presence of the frequency of a being here and I, it didn't didn't scare me didn't freak me out but I was like okay who is that who's here and then it just it went away and then right immediately on Facebook um, Eric actually messaged me and he said how are you feeling and I said did you just scan me <laughs> and he, he said yes I did and I said, I heard you. I heard you. So I believe that um, along with the energies, and I, I don't think it's any coincidence that I um, came across Eric and heard about this implant removal, we are actually honing in to realizing um, the enhancement of all of our abilities are coming online. And we just have to um, acknowledge them as they come up in our reality to mm -hmm. figure out what what abilities we have and you know how we can I mean imagine the horror that these negative beings in the astral realm are going to have when we can hear when they're coming up behind us or next to us or if we can actually begin to see them I mean they'll be like deer in the headlights you know she can see me the game's up oh yeah you know when they can't do they're not as powerful as we are so when they can't do things by trickery and smoke and mirrors, it's like, it's like when the magician gets up on stage, you know, um, that David, um, one of those really, you know, yeah, that one of those magicians, yeah, and he gets up on stage and his trick doesn't work. It's like he'll be going like, 
you know, because it is smoke and mirrors mm-hmm. because they can't see. Uh, I mean, we can't see them, but they can see us. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had one of those experiences and I can see these guys now. My my abilities have been amplified. I I, I have remote viewing abilities now since the last five months. And I actually went on Mars to see what's going on there because I had a lifetime there before. Um two lifetimes ago, I think that was. So Mars is kind of dear to me. So I went up and I saw these interplanetary corporate conglomerate bases, 20 bases on Mars, where they're um, experimenting on people to build cyborgs with human parts. These people are unwilling. Uh, And I was looking at it, looking, uh, remembering what I saw, and I documented it and put it on my website in a fax page. Two days later, lo and behold, there is a um, cloaked hovercraft hovering above my house and they're trying to wipe out my memories of what I saw up there, what I physically saw. And um, they couldn't wipe anything away because my brain is wired differently now. It's wired like my little, my brain is like a supercomputer. I remember everything that ever was or will be, have a photographic memory. So they couldn't do that. So they sent a um, human hybrid reptilian assassin who's um, big, beginner level fourth dimensional, she tried to kill me a theory, on the etheric level, make it look like I died naturally. And while she was trying all of this, I said to her, look, you, you can kill my physical body, which I'm not going to make it easy for you to do either, but my soul is still here and I can come back and petition to have a cleaning crew come up there on Mars and clean out your bases. So you can send out that message to your higher-ups, to whoever you report back to I could have destroyed their ship because I have the ability to destroy like technology that's not for the highest good but then I'd have an assassin in my house so that wouldn't be very good for me not for my optimal health so she went back and she reported to them what I said to her because look even if I die physically I'm still alive my soul lives on it doesn't die So that was the message for these Mm -hmm. guys. You could try to build cyborgs, like human cyborgs, AI, incorporate that into the human body. But, you know, you're not evolving. You're not progressing naturally. That's not natural. So you might kill a physical body, but the soul lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how long is the battle going to continue? I mean, you know killing each other off we've done for so long and it may have been a part of their overlay of the matrix but the true original template that was created for this physical incarnation did have some polarity in it but it's it's the negative and positive aspect of the positive polarity because everything has the dualistic um, aspect in it so um when it was taken down to the third dimension and and this particular level of third dimension and then the overlay put on there uh, with the control mechanisms of artificial intelligence that do limit people to standing in their sovereign power um, it's the only way that they were able to um, to keep things happening but they must have known that this cycle of time would um, end this whole um, larger cycle and um, I think that more than anything right now what's exciting is that we are helping to heal the um, negative beings and they are tired themselves and wanting to be healed and that involves um, either um, providing a portal back to source to be reconstituted into another experience or healing and changing from negative to positive polarity and serving, taking the, all the energy that they took and actually serving humanity and earth and this uh, solar system and this galaxy in the best way possible. So those are the options. If you, if they stay on the planet, Um, without doing either one of those two options, I see that they um, will be losing their physicality and basically being in a void space for a while until um, they're being, they're swept back in through the in-breath. 
and then they get to return that way. And that's really not the fun way at all. No, I don't think any of these higher ups who are on those ICC basis realize what they're doing. They have no idea. As they're just as sleep as the yeah. people on our planet. Yeah, they're disconnected from source energy. They think, okay, like we're improving human beings. The um, what's it? Transhuman transhumanism. I think that's what that concept is yes. called, uh, mm -hmm. where you're blending technology with um, human parts, human body. But they they don't realize that there's a soul essence that empowers the human body. That's what makes it work. Really, they don't understand if you take that concept away and make it all machine, you're not going to grow much. You're going to be walking, talking, enhanced cybernetic body, a being, but you're not going to grow spiritually or emotionally. You're going to be like one level 3D, 40, and that's all you get. You don't evolve, you don't advance, you don't grow naturally. So... I don't think these guys understand what they're working with, all these concepts. They don't get Well, it. they don't have the emotional body that we do. And they are um, probably a product of the artificial intelligence to begin with. And all they're really interested in is building bodies to be able to, when they capture particles of souls, to be able to shove them in the bodies and have an um, energy generator to continue to feed off of because they then now they when they chose they chose the the path of furthest away from source and when they chose that path i know that they were told that eventually that will all come to an end but they've forgotten all of that too and they've forgotten that they are an aspect of source that can experience or or um uh, be uh, positive or negative and can change at any time and truly there is no um, there I, I mean I hate to say this because there's so much suffering in the world right now but there is no good or bad it just is experience and they chose that role in the play and they got lost and we got lost and we all need to find each other and do a kumbaya and go home yes I agree with you <laughs> I, I mean I do past life regression. That's part of my healing services that I offer and soul retrieval and um, writing um, the DNA frequencies to heal yourself, self-healing. I teach that as well. And I've been working on myself for the last two years because these guys did a number on me. And I, I woke up about two and a half years ago. So for me, it was fast track awakening and on the way to ascension, like everything fast tracked because I was way I hate to say it, but I was way behind what I where I should be. So I just cleaned everything out, um, reset everything. My whole body was reset, and I started talking to Source, my higher selves, um, making ET contact with benevolent um, extraterrestrial beings that are part of my soul groups. So, and it's really helping me. It, it, it's making me a bigger person, I could say. And yeah, not, not just uh, working on myself, not not just the I am, but service to others. That's really why I start, started doing all of this, the show, the website, and connecting with people that are on the same frequency as me, healers, spiritualists, ET researchers. This is so important right now. It is. Um, I think that, uh, you know, WaveX is, um, has been blown um, really out of proportion as to exactly what it is, but that's okay too because people are all, everyone's having their own experience and their own idea of what's happening and they're making it what they need it to be in their reality. But the way I see that Simon um, Atkins has uh, described WaveX is that we've, we've had waves of electromagnetic frequency of higher vibration coming to the planet. It's what woke us up. And there's an argument, well, is it coming from the outside? You know, anything coming from the outside is not good. Oh, it really is coming from the inside. Um, but it's just that in this, in this illusion construct that we were in, it seems like it's coming from the outside. It seems like it's coming to us, but really, is Earth actually moving through it? Is Earth actually moving towards it? I mean, these are all things that people are getting hung up on and, and arguing over on the Internet. And I just want to say, 
the wave X is um, a larger, it's like, it's like all the waves that have come are like pages in a book and wave X is more of the larger. It's like the book hitting you at once. It's like, okay, if you haven't woken up at this point, then you're going to have to be knocked around a little bit. Sorry to be putting, putting it so blunt. For those who have woken up and done the fast track and are really trying to uh, and finding themselves now straddling, you know, straddling, you've got 3D over here, 5D over here, and you're wanting to be over here in 5D in your body, but then you have to have a 3D conversation with somebody about the weather or about politics or about football or about all these things, money, then all these things that really don't matter in your world and we're getting really tired of it so um, you know this is an energy wave coming or or coming within or coming without whatever it's freaking happening and we're already feeling it and it's for the good and a lot of people are trying to make it a fear-mongering thing because it is actually affecting people who are holding on to fear it's amplifying their own um, thoughts and everything so that it can be it can be seen so that we can all move those of us who are ready to move to have a new experience in a fifth dimensional frequency um, it's not really like we're leaving the planet it's like we're experiencing the planet in a different frequency and we may or may not eventually be seen by other people who are still wanting to have that third dimensional experience until one point it snaps and shifts and you can only um, see the beings that are of the higher frequency that you're in and you can't um, you might be able to go um, observe the other beings that are in a third dimensional frequency but um, they may not be able to see you just as we can't see the higher dimensional beings that are here helping us so it's just another um, larger cycle ending of uh, compaction and uh, denseness and um, now the energies will expand and allow uh, for more spaces in between which is where creation occurs and allow for um, us to separate vibrationally and I know that um, people have been talking about this for a very long time and people thought it was supposed to happen in 2012 and perhaps it was supposed to happen but if something um, we would have got some of these waves that we're getting now back in 2012. I think it might have been a disaster uh, as far as how many people we're able to help and bring into the newer dimensions, into the higher frequencies. There just, was, just wasn't that. Um, I don't know if there wasn't a critical mass, but I think uh, there might have been a critical mass. But um, I think more than that, there, it wasn't satisfactory to the crew that's here. No, we can get more. We can get more. So I'm not sure if we had an, um, a timeline incursion from the dark to keep us from moving or if we had a timeline incursion from the light to allow us more time um, or both. I think it's both because um, 2012 was about uh, the Mayan calendar ending and gateways opening up to bring these energies in to start the process for that to happen. We weren't not a lot of people were ready, but a lot weren't awoken at that time. And they're like, they would have been what, huh? huh? These energies are impacting me. And if you don't know, and at that time, there weren't a lot of shows like this going on either. Pe people weren't coming forward. Like Corey Good is coming up. Uh, David Wilcock, Tolik of the Andromeda Council. Everybody is stepping out and spreading the word of disclosure, ETs. Let's face it, even in 2012, I was not I was looking at this stuff, but I wasn't seeing it out there on the internet. And now everybody that needs to come out is coming out, and these energies are helping. Well, I'd like to say a little bit about um, Tolek, Corey Good, and David Wilcock and the ET agenda. Um, I feel like every single thing is energy. And um, so whether you're, an, whether you're talking about an angel, an archangel, an extraterrestrial or whatever, it really doesn't matter. I think that the separation was deliberate on this planet to come out with the New Age agenda and the ET agenda to make everything look separate. Mm -hmm. And so what we have is we have people that are having their own experiences inside of their own heads, whether it's a program or whether it's a being, doesn't matter. 
I know everyone that has their own um, communication with ETs or communication even if they're mind controlled, it's still real to them and it's still their truth. The thing is, is we've got to stop criticizing other people's thoughts and, and allow them to speak their own truth so that they can better find out who they are and just to realize that it's 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 energy and it's here to um, awaken people to have an open mind. One of the biggest things that catapulted me in my awakening was the thought of extraterrestrials and Barbara Marciniak's Pleiadians, when in fact um, there may be a program running to where these beings don't even look anything like what we've been told they look like, and they may not even look anything like what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Because we're seeing them from a third dimensional perspective still. Um, they may look just like that, but it depends on what dimension you're looking at them in. Because they are multidimensional beings as well, and they may as well even be us in a different level, in a different dimension. So uh, I would just like to encourage everybody to stop trying to find, I just did a video on this, what is the truth? You know, stop trying to find out who's more right and just honor people's, um, their own truth and take what helps you to learn your truth and leave what doesn't without criticism and without calling people shills, without calling people being triggered and mind controlled and all this because you're only doing that to yourself on a higher level. Because we are all connected and it's not contributing positively to the collective human consciousness that we're trying to achieve in fifth dimension of honor, respect, compassion, love, peace. It's only bickering amongst, amongst ourselves. Exactly. I mean, Corey Good is sharing his experiences, what he's gone through and trying to just shed some light and bring out courage. He's very courageous. I find that he came out. I, I believe somebody outed him. He wasn't ready to come out when, when he was outed, but his information serves its own purpose for the people to help people wake up. And David Wilcock as well, he, he is an intuitive himself. So it, it is very courageous that they're doing this. And I think more people will come out eventually with their own experiences to share with the collective consciousness because something is happening to everyone right now something different and amazing everybody's on their own journey of experience and some people want to share that with the world and like you said no judgment no criticism if it resonates with you take it in ponder it if it doesn't let it go and continue exploring Find something else you know we there is something said about looking outside of yourself in order to be able to look inside because this is is to to a certain extent the exterior is a reflection and a projection of what's inside um so if we're hearing about extraterrestrials and hearing stories about it even if it's um a program being run in someone's head it's still a reflection of what that person may have experienced and then who are we to say what experience it is it could be that they're simultaneously having that lifetime somewhere else you know on another mm -hmm. planet so it's uh thinking outside of the box and expanding your perception of the the vast number of people that are here from different places for different reasons and on different levels and if we can't learn to get along here on earth how the heck do we expect to be able to take either our body as a spaceship or get on a spaceship and travel through a wormhole and go visit other planets if we can't even get along here with the variety of beings we have here? What's going to happen out in the cosmos? Exactly. Um, and it's interesting. Wormholes are naturally made. Black holes are technology made, some of them. Um, I have the ability to project myself outside my body and be a different being, you can call it having a light body, and I can go out in space without needing a spaceship and look at all these things and interact with these different AT groups. For me, it's I find it's an organic process. I don't see myself as being controlled or in a program of any 
of any type because I ask, what is this? What am I experiencing? What is the truth going on? What I'm seeing when I'm out there in space? So I ask for the truth from source and somebody trying to trick me, I will find out and I will not participate in the program because I'm aware that they try to trick us and they've tried a number of things on me. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not interfering with my experience. Get out, leave. I, I pray every night. I set protection, talk to my guides, and I just set protection around my house and my family as well. So I'm uh, spiritually protected and not interfered with, with programming. Well, it's so, um, I, I smile and smirk and because inside I'm looking at this, you know, very soft spoken, you know, very kind person who's inside going, don't F with me. I will blow you up if I have to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I did want to ask you something. Um, I know this is your show and you should be asking me, but this is more turned more into more conversation between us about topics. I, um, I had a lady um, who has the psychic ability and astral travel ability as well, um, who gave me a conglomerate um, situation explanation about what she thinks is happening as far as how we are actually receiving the waybacks. And she says that it's a little bit close to um, Rose from Yellow Rose from Texas, Yellow Rose for Texas, from her observation of looking at the SOHO images of what NASA hides from us uh, as far as that the uh, planets are like on these poles, kind of like the old mechanical solar system model with the gears and stuff mm -hmm. where here's the sun and all these planets go around. And that Earth was, um, the poles hold the planets into, into place actually, and whether they're etheric or whatever, you can actually see them on the SOHO images. And that the earth is actually moving towards the eye. And that according to Rose, father is actually pulling his children out of the abyss. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, another way to, to look at it is that like perhaps at the time of Atlantis, the crystals were used to create this black hole and Earth fell in her dimension through this black hole into someone else's creation of artificial intelligence and technology, and that's the matrix. So um, what she's seeing psychically is that on the other side of the black hole is our original creation where the space and time where we were before we fell in dimension and the energy, the wave X coming through the black hole is actually like a blue wave of energy. And when it sweeps the planet, it will um, help to raise our consciousness even more and, and get us ready and prepared for going into our astral body, coming out of our physical body, going into our astral body, while Earth makes her return back through the eye, back to where she she's supposed to go. And then returning back into a physical body, but it's more like your avatar body that you've already created on the new earth, uh, which light, which is on the other side. So she's basically removing our consciousness from this experience and taking those who are ready to go with her and reforming into a physical nature with a third dimensional slash five dimensional slash nature like higher third dimensional existence where you can still have a physical body, but still be in 5d consciousness. <clears throat> and that CERN is actually um, keeping the earth from moving through the portal, uh, holding it back. And um, that the wave of consciousness as it comes will, um, what they'd want to do as trickery is to make people think that we've had a false ascension. Once we feel this big wave and we we're like, wow, you know, maybe we've ascended because maybe even the colors of on the earth and everything will change and everything will be sparkly and have this energy flowing through it now. So did we ascend and then this, and then the ships come and they're the trickery ships, and there's all of this scenario that's been poured out to me, and it, it is quite fantastic and quite imaginative, and it very may well be her reality of what she sees, but she's confirming this with other people and groups, that they've had similar psychic visions, 
And the thing is, is it's being interpreted a little bit different and there be different belief systems in different languages. So not one of them is wrong, but not one of them is completely right either. Have you had any kind of similar agreement that earth is actually being moved rather than, well, we're moving through the photon belt, but it's actually moving back out of that black hole. What do you think about that? Well, I think there's a backup blueprint to the original 12th dimensional earth on the other side of that black hole. And that's being integrated with this earth. They're trying, they're bringing in with these, um, with this wave X energy, they're bringing that blueprint closer to the earth we have now. It doesn't matter if the earth goes through the black hole or not. They're trying to merge the blue, the original blueprint with what we have now to make that's it better. Yes. And I actually wow. saw this wave X it's sentient. It has 10 different multi-dimensional levels. So it's alive. It's a living energy field. Even if CERN tries to fire at it, I mean, they've tried Ain't to gonna happen. <laughs> not going to happen. They tried to fire off on August 15th on the Lionsgate energies that came in didn't even penetrate those energies. Wave X is even bigger than Lionsgate was because Lionsgate was portals opening up in the star systems and coming toward the Milky Way galaxy and towards Earth, bringing in other energies, light rays. Wave X is even more than just light rays. It's 10 different dimensional energies. It's like a spiral. It's like a spiral, blue, purple, and green lights. Oh my gosh. I dreamed about that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw, I went out in my light body and I saw it, how it's circling earth and the earth is glowing like white, blue, sort of like Tolik, what Tolik describes as, and within the earth, SAR energy, like blue, white. So the earth is becoming translucent. It's expanding outward. It looks more liquidy. Mm -hmm. so, We're expanding as well. Yes, we are. This this energy is coming into our bodies. We're taking it in and we're growing. So whatever abilities we have, like what Simon Atkins says, level one, two, three, four, that's all expanding. And it, it, people who haven't awoken yet will start to experience something and feel something and they're going to have question marks. And these shows, I think, will help with that. But going back to Wave X, it is a living sentient energy that is alive and it's cognitive. So the wave itself is interacting with people and it talks to people too. So, and it's just merging that uh, 12th dimensional blueprint with what we have currently 3D moving up to five and all the way to 9D. There's different levels of experiences that we'll be able to jump to from 5D to 9D. From this... You know why that, where you get that 9D um, is because the matrix is a 9D. The original organic blueprint is a 12D. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to heal the matrix, heal this matrix and take over this creation and make it a light creation, we could do that. And we could even do that and leave it for other people to experience it. And then when we're done with this experience, we can go back through the black hole back home to the original 12D matrix where we're 12 dimensional, 12th dimensional and higher multidimensional beings. But then yet still, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I just had to get this out. Mm -hmm. That's also a sphere. Uh, even through the other side of the black hole is also a sphere of light creation to where you can have um, a physical experience. But then you can go even further than that and leave and go t leave that sphere of creation which is more pure and more free uh, and go hop around to some other sphere of creation or go create your own sphere of creation. Exactly. You on the other side, you have more choices. It's easier. You have light bodies. You can choose to have a physical body, but you can also choose to have a light body and you don't need spaceships to travel out in space and to go other, to go to other dimensions, other universes. It's all, it all opens up and expands on the other side. So it's so much easier and you still experience emotion, but not to that heavy, dense degree that we experience here. So things just become easier. Um, so the way you learn your lessons is different because you don't have 
karmic debt anymore on the other mm -hmm. side. That's gone. This karmic experiment is almost over. We've had 54 million years of this on this earth. Different species living, civilizations forming, breaking apart, things building on top of those civilizations, you know. And we don't even know the half of the story, the, the true reality of what has gone down on this earth. We don't know it. Because what, we've been around for only 200,000 years? Like, what do we know? But it's all there. The evidence is there. It's just not being revealed to us. So on the other side, you are one with time. Time is like fluid. It flows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't break apart like here on the denser version of this 3D earth. It's all one solid thing. It flows. And you can experience whatever you want without having the density and the hardship of karma working through well, all of this stuff. And space and time is really an illusion, but every place has a date, uh, has a stamp of a coordinate in the space and time matrix. So really, I mean, it could be that eventually a version of Earth gets pulled back through the black hole, but it could be like you said, where there is no space and time anyway. So it's, it's just maybe a linear way of understanding a projection that's being sent in the mind to understand that um, uh, the difference in vibration between 3D and 5D, where we're not actually moving anywhere, but it's actually not coming to us either. It just is happening from within. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people um, have this fear propaganda going, well, if, it's, if anything's coming from outside, outside of you, you don't need it anyway because we're creator beings, blah, blah, blah. Well, if that's the case. I'd like to see you go ahead and transmute everything and transmute into a light body without that energy coming. Whatever, whether it's coming within or from without, go for it. Show me how that you can do it. You know, this is why we've been stagnant because we're missing this energy blast because all of our energy has been stolen from us and, well, turned into negative energy and then stolen from us. So um, we need this um, boost, I think, in order to, uh, because it, it could have happened more on a, on a level basis and it could have happened in 2012 and then slowly unfolded. But what, what has happened with the, um, the dark beings is that they have ramped up their agenda, this transhumanism agenda to try to go ahead. They know that they're screwed. So they're going to go ahead and try to create as many superhuman soldier transhumanist beings uh, as possible so that they can perhaps um, make it even um, where they can project a portion of their consciousness into that body and be able to stay in a third dimensional. And it may very well be that source has given them um, the opportunity to take a copy of Earth and have this experience as a transhumanism body that may be one of the parallel Earths and parallel experiences that will unfold. It's just that how many beings were trapped without their free will into that experience is the issue. And I believe that everyone, every soul, every person on the planet should have a full truth understanding of what's happening to be able to make a conscious choice. And that is where free will in the future got um, taken away and some of the future timelines unfolding of transhumanism were breaking the universal law. And that's where some of us were able to come back into no space and no time uh, at this particular time stamp and change what happens for those other souls that got lost in um, the transhumanism agenda because the version of the body that they want to build will almost never let you wake up. Mm -mm. So um, that's totally against universal law completely. Um, and then they would just recycle those sparks of those souls over and over again and wasn't going to be allowed so yes and that's what i saw on mars just a lot of people being used against their wills in these labs making these cyborgs ai type thing meshing the human body human parts they were killing people and using human parts to create these cyborgs and experimenting on people who are alive and merging them with technology 
they had four, about four of these labs on Mars, and these guys have 20 bases on Mars. These corporate conglomerates who are trying to advance technology and think it's okay. Well, it's not okay. They're having their experiences, but they can't use people against their will. These well, people the are body, trapped. The body is just a, a vehicle, a vessel, and can be um, can be copied and duplicated. But when you kit, when you bring a person from Earth in a physical body in a, um, like a bubble, and are able to put them through a stargate and take them through and reassemble them and put them right back together like Star Trek technology and be in that different dimension on Mars. And then you kill the body. What they want to do is they want to trap the soul as it jumps out of the body. So they can kill, they've already cloned you. They can make 10 of you. If they kill that body that your soul is in and then pull, they have technology to pull the soul out and then splinter it up, make mm-hmm. multiple personalities out of it. And they and they may have even done that before they killed you, part of the uh, my lab type experiment where they um, splinter your, um, they make multiple personalities by torture and by programming, things like that. So then they capture all those different splinters of you and they can put one in each body. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they don't know what they're doing. Like you yeah. said, they don't have any emotions and they're only carrying out orders. And the better they do their job, the more they're rewarded. And that program is also run on fear as well. Fear of not doing your job well. So there's a lot of awakening. It's not just earth. It's the solar system, the galaxy, um, the cosmos, the, the multi-universe. I mean, there's when when you heal the cancer from the lowest dimensional place of physicality for conscience like ours for for the human consciousness then you're lifting the bar for everything and that's why earth is so important right now to to do that here and um those of us if there's any planets left that haven't been uh, corrected, we could certainly be spokespeople for those planets as well to heal to heal those to stop the abuse of the free will, um, taking free will away by basically just forgetting who you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it was an experiment. Yes, it was. And what these guys are forgetting is that the soul, if the soul says no to splintering or to being taken out of the body, you can't take the soul. All you have to do is say no and not agree mm-hmm. to it. And your soul cannot be taken by these dark beings. It can't can't be put in a cyborg. It can't be recycled. If you have the ability to see the truth and say no, they can't touch you. That's the thing. They can't. So we That's because you know, you're your source and they're you're connected with source and they're not. Exactly. Exactly. And um more people will start to realize this as more well, people. Well, it just shows it's information like this, you know, just having a flowing conversation with somebody um, to be able to put the information out there for people to to realize and to share. I mean, who knows? You know, um, you know, there are there are um, when Source created souls, they um, it created some souls that have more of a positive percentage and more of a negative percentage. And from what I understand, and and this, this is not coming from within, this is coming from without some information that I've read, even in 27% negative soul is just about the darkest kind of soul you could have on the planet. So there truly are souls that maybe even want to go through the transhumanism experience, but there needs to be a choice. Okay, there needs to be a choice. And so there will be um, a reality that still exists where they can go have their little transhumanist experience. It will just be different um, than the outcome that um, was created under taking away um, or going against universal law. That one will be dissolved and it will be fan out more into um, conscious choice with consciousness 
Exactly. I mean, we're all allowed to have our different experiences, but we can't be forced to have a mass, like totally the same experience. They can't do this, do that to us anymore. I think they were trying to lump us all in in one experience on the planet and to have that as a collective, but we're saying no to that because we're multidimensional beings and we can do so much. We're capable of so much. We are creator builder beings and we are able to manifest our own realities that we are living in free will, free choice. And that's what these guys were trying to take away from us, but they can't do it in future timelines or even in this timeline mm -hmm. because our choice is ours. It's not theirs to control anymore. It's just that way of old paradigm is over. Goodbye. No, thanks. And when we're done having a matrix experience, you know, a matrix is simply a light creation. And um, that's sound, uh, energy vibrating a certain sound and basically splitting light um, into different um, colors with sound and, and, and having it be at a certain frequency. When we're done with that, um, that particular creation, whoever created it, can very simply just uncreate, unmanifest it, uncreate it by stopping splitting the light you know, into, into the pure pyramid, into the, um, the different, you know, into reality, into the matrix. It can be just unmanifested when we're all done playing this game. And either you can go on to a new light creation, like I said, another matrix, or you can go just hang out closer to source, closer to home, more, you know, being whole with your oversoul, which I call the monad. Um, and just, share your experience you never lose your actual um identity as a separate being because that's what this particular universe was created um to do is to be separate in order to for source to get to know or the creator of this experience when i when i make a dis distinction uh, what I mean is that source um, is, you know, this conglomerate of energy and source created different creator beings. Those different creator beings created their own universes. So it's the creator of that universe. And to experience in that universe, they sent forth more aspects of themselves. Some of them they created like angels or helpers for them to help run the show. And others they created as souls, which are like monads. Uh, over souls and then they go and they send an aspect of themselves down to have the creation now that's just a real linear way of looking at things that may not be the way it really happened at all but it it, it gives us an idea because the truth is way different than <laughs> we can even you know there is no separation no. okay mm -hmm. But in order to experience this um, we have to understand separation and so um, that's the way I see it. That's why I say the creator, creator, and then I have to re remember which creator I'm talking about. And even, even that one source creator that created all the creator beings, that created all of the uh, multi-universes, well, it probably has a creator too because creation is infinite. So where does it stop? I don't think it does. So I guess what I'm trying to say is at the end of this if you get tired of being in physical form and, and uh, if you get tired of being in a dimension, which is all part of a matrix, a light creator matrix, then you can go do something else. There's no telling what else is out there besides light creation. I mean, it's, we just can't remember right now. Well, I mean, I've, through doing uh, my past life work regression, like on myself creating my own self-guided meditation because I can't listen to other people's voices. I've tried with music. I've tried everything. Nothing worked. So I just said, okay, I'll create my own. And um, I blended in a bit of shamanism with hypnosis. And I was able to regress myself to remember that I have had 202 lifetimes. I can remember clearly 20 of those. The rest I know I've had and I can pull experiences from them. I just don't look at them in more clarity because I don't need to see all of them, what I did. But I, as I understand it, the soul is a complete being that sits on the tree of life, which has different branches. And you can split yourself 
your little soul sparks apart and have multiple different lifetime experiences simultaneously. Mm -hmm. What we call past lives may not really be past lives. They may be concurrent lifetimes. You're experiencing different parts that you need to learn. And then you integrate it all back to the tree of life at the top and the branches come back together. Your soul sparks, different splitter ends of yourself come back and bring in the information until you're a totally whole being again. And you can do that multiple times, split apart, come back together until, you know, you've learned everything you could ever really want on that level. And then you can just be one soul being having a lifetime of infinity experience and not having to branch off and branch in. Again. Right. And what happened is that our um, soul sparks got hijacked and lost and trapped. And so that's when divine cre creation intervention was had where it sent its angels or its helpers in to raise the vibration of the experience, to bring it back into balance. Because it would have been okay to have that type of government, polarity, duality type experience if it wasn't where they tricked to take our free will away to have the experience and then started splintering our souls shard into shards of like frozen pieces of glass in no time. Mm -hmm. Just to where we're never, we never reintegrate and we never, our, our um, soul, uh, our oversoul is never whole again. And, and it's been, we've been caught for a very long time outside of that wholeness. That's the whole or emptiness that everyone feels in their solar plexus and the why everyone's always looking outside of themselves for love and approval and acceptance because we're our, our over soul had been damaged so much that it was beginning to actually damage the creator of this experience mm -hmm. i agree with you and we're slowly realizing that this is just a paradigm we're experiencing and we can step out of it create something else of our own to experience or go into other dimensions that have already been created that we want to experience more of. And people are, um, they're choosing to remove their veils of forgetfulness. And even I believe we have 12 levels of that veil of forgetfulness in our chakra systems, because we don't just have seven chakras, we have 12 and even beyond the 12 solar chakras, we have more on the body. Um, it's just we're not experiencing all of that. And um, one layer at a time, we're removing that veil of forgetfulness, parts of it, and remembering who we truly are and what we're here to do and what we're here to do even beyond just the here, what our future is, to see it. Some people mm -hmm. can see their future and like, oh, wow, I'm so capable of doing that and that is what I'm striving to do. That's why mm -hmm. people sometimes see their future because it inspires them, their creation, their imagination, their creativity. You actually work toward that future that you saw to make it happen. Yes, and I think acknowledgement and intention are our power in healing instantly those lost shards of soul that got stuck outside of ourselves and and integrated and healed back to a vibration to where they can be brought back to wholeness and then being able to i guess what we chose from because our consciousness is here in the now right here having this experience i guess we chose that if we could awaken and be powerful enough here that we could integrate um those back into our emotional body here and integrate them back to our soul that way and through earth helping us to integrate. So we are actually pulling more of our oversoul at the top of the tree down into this body by, by bringing it from the other branches into this rather than going up there for now so that they can be reintegrated here and then go back up more wholly going back up that way because in order to magnetize them to you 
on the branches, you had to be down on the branch to magnetize it. You couldn't really pull it all the way up at the top. There were other branches in the way. <laughs> so you had to go down where the problem was and magnetize it to you that way and then bring it up. And that's just very linear thinking, but it, yes. and it's very imaginative. But it, it does help. It does help to understand how the heck we ended up here doing, because this, there's so many people suffering right now, Elena. There's, they're just, and they understand what's happening, and they're still suffering because it's so, it's difficult uh, until you get to a certain point. People want the fast track, but they're not willing to do the work. And the work is simply acknowledgement and understanding of what you're here to do and to start doing it on a daily basis. Healing, asking for those soul shards of yourself to be integrated and not to be afraid of what you may feel when it comes back through your emotional body and instantly you start crying, bust out crying. You may be, have anger. Um, the important part is to not reflect it or I'm sorry, pre project it to someone else and give them your crap that you need to own and heal yourself. Even if you do it in front of someone else, to do it and, and keep it within you and allow uh, Mother Earth being grounded, allow Mother Earth to help you process it and move the energy through your emotional body, which is a tool that you can use. And um, if you do accidentally project some of it, be sure and apologize and take your energy back that you gave to them and be responsible and process the rest of it. Exactly. Otherwise, what, what will happen is it will come back to you in a different way and you'll just have another experience over and over and over again until you figure it out. Yes, yeah, sometimes people um, say relationships. For example, somebody is married and and they um, experience the same thing over and over in terms of their partner might um, be looking elsewhere and they're not willing to acknowledge that why is that happening? Why is that partner doing that? And it happens every, it's a, like a little cycle. Every six months, the, the partner who is looking elsewhere does that habit and the other person is triggered. And they can't figure out, how do I balance this to stop this from happening every six months? You, they might have to own up that it's not their fault that their partner is doing that. It's, it's not up to them to change their partner. You either accept the person as they are or, you, or to live with them or you let them go because you're perpetuating the same cycle over and over again. But you have to look, ask yourself, what are you learning from this? What is the experience in your, what is the experience you are taking away from this? Even though your partner is doing that to you, maybe just as an example, but what are you taking from this? What are you learning? Can you live with this or do you let it go and choose to go on to a better experience perhaps? So that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And I agree that you can't change somebody else, but um, hope you're hoping you hope that um, that person is ready to work on themselves. There's a mis misunderstanding thrown out there that people should be themselves and not um, have other people try to change them. And while that's true, the people that think they're being themselves are not really being themselves and they're not taking responsibility for their own, own actions and instead saying, well, that's me. If you don't like it, hit the highway. Well, if it's negativity, that's not really them. They've forgotten who they are. They're an aspect of source and um, source when you are embodying source, which means you're closer to source. You're not the furthest away from source. You are those positive love high vibrational aspects and there's always an opportunity for learning growth even though you think you're just not changing the person they're being themselves but they still are influenced by you because you're together in a way so even that person who has the perpetual habit of doing something every six months because it's just it, it, it's 
kind of like an addictive habit, but they're still changing and growing too because their partner is influencing them in some positive way. Change happens. It might be slower than what the person wants, but it's happening. So there is soul growth and soul learning even from those tough situations that keep yeah. being repeated over and over. Um, and it's up to the people to to say, can I live with this or should I be looking elsewhere and seeing what's on the other side of this picture if there's something um, better out there for me or is this yes. my soulmate and I can accept them for what it is. Well, there comes a time, you know, when the when the universal law of vibration though steps in, and if you just continue to grow, and they continue continue to either stay stagnant or to even lower themselves into the this denser reality, then you'll you'll come to the point where you'll realize they don't even can't even communicate with you a uh, normal everyday communication about groceries or bills or anything. You simply will not be able to communicate because you're not vibrating at the same, even close to the same frequency. And I say this in my complete observation of my second marriage and, um, you know, even speaking about anything very high vi vibrational would simply put my husband directly to sleep. He would just fall asleep. And it does have to do with these implants that I've been speaking about. It's, um, it is how the, um, the hooks are tied in to um, turn them off when there's anything that they need to hear um, and also trigger them to say and do things that aren't of their own thoughts and that they don't even remember five minutes later. I've had, I had that happen so many times in a conversation, trying to have normal conversation. I'm just going to give you an example. Well, we need to go to the grocery store because we're out of milk. Um, if you want to get ready in about 10 minutes or so, we can get ready and go, oh, okay, 10 minutes goes by. Are you ready? For what? <laughs> well, uh, to go to the grocery store. Oh, I heard that part, but, and then I, and then, well, well, you said, okay, you'll be ready. And no, I didn't, <laughs> you know, <Okay. laughs> and that went on and it's, it has a lot to do with several things the triggers and plants, but also the um, chemtrails hold nanoparticles and the food, the GMO food ho hold particles as well that are full of aluminum and aluminum, uh, it reroutes the wiring of the brain to where parts of the memory are cut off and um, causes um, cognitive dissonance and causes memory problems and things along with the emotional triggers caused by the implants. So it's a really complex and brilliant multi-level scheme used. Um, so if you can't bring that to the attention, I even threatened to use a um, digital recorder and just push rewind and play just so they could hear themselves because I was wondering because I knew uh, began to know that it is a multi-dimensional experience I was beginning to wonder if I heard something different than what they actually thought that they said that's how weird this thing can get so I never I never did that because it would it would have been I was uh, actually using anger and actually using um well, I was, I was sad and angry that this was happening to me, that my partner was being taken away from me and wasn't willing to look at what the problem was or wasn't able at, at some points, wasn't even able because of all of the programming and belief systems um, and yearning and uh, yearning for money, the, the money thing was huge, um, would not be, was not willing to make a change of moving out of the oil field industry into free energy or another area that would actually contribute to the outcome and parallel um, highest and best out outcome of reality that we're trying to create. So there's so many things when those come down to making a choice, there's just no other choice but to move on. And of course, mm -hmm. that had to happen in order for me to find the partner that I really needed to work with in this manner which is communication and putting information out there and sharing experiences so people can make their own choices based on, there's so much guilt too 
you know, when you marry somebody, you go to the courthouse and you say, I vow to, you know, be with you until death do us part. And then they trigger your implants on each other and make you completely wonder what the hell you were doing when you got married. And um, that's why there's so... <laughs> That's why there's so many marriages that fall apart. You know, it's engineered that way. And then you have to go rely on a judge to tell you how your whole life should be divided up. Somebody else outside of you is telling you how to divorce and how to leave. So all of this is, has to change the agreements that we have as um, responsible individuals. You go into a relationship with full respect of each other's. And if you, you know, you say up front, if ever we do not vibrate at the same frequency or decide to um, go on different paths, then we shall do so. Uh, we shall leave each other with honor and respect and hopefully remain friends and just change your whole way of thinking and be more responsible, I guess, is the best way I can put it. Exactly. And sometimes there's even more outside influences like um, different entities and beings coming in and whispering to that person. So these bad habits get accentuated and amplified and the person doesn't know how to um, how to basically say no to these entities and beings because they're floating around this person all the time and it it could be on the familial level as well it could have happened to their father and mm -hmm. the same cycle is perpetuated again in the family because these these somewhat negative entities or beings are not letting go of the familial line they're just that's right hanging around floating and triggering this person to act out if they're stressed or they're going through a situation that they don't know how to work through so that's what i found through doing my healing work sometimes people have entities hanging around them and i'm like okay we need to do a bit of a clearing here and I'll talk to these entities and I'll say, okay, no more of this. You can't do this to this person anymore. You can't influence the person. You need to give that person their free will back. Let go. So, yes. What I try to do is, I mean, it depends on the level of who contacts me, but I definitely try to teach people to do that work themselves because they can have all the, the best um, intentions in the world to come to you and get a quote, get a healing, but it, it truly, everyone has the power to heal themselves. And if they slip and allow something else into their lives, they need to know how to heal it themselves, how to recognize it and heal it, heal it themselves. So but sometimes you do need a little help from other people to run them off, but they'll just come right back if you don't realize the underlying cause of why you're attracting it. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you could be attracting it. One is that you do have that uh, family um, DNA lineage that they've hooked into to purposefully keep you um, with a contract each time you incarnate to serve a particular line uh, of beings that want your particular luge. And... Um, I just lost my train of thought. There's reasons why people are, uh, oh, um, no, I totally lost my train of thought. I'll think of it in a minute. That happens every now and then when I get, when I go up there in the corner and then I come back in, <laughs> it's like for an instant severed, but, uh, you know, we're not, yeah. we're all trying to get back into our perfection, but we're not, we're not that quite, we're, we're not quite there yet. That's so, okay. What's left? I remember the second thing. Oh, loose is your is your energy. It, it's a term that was given um, uh, back, you know, on the study of the um, what they're stealing from you. It's just another term, another term for your energy, your stored up energy that they're you. You are basically an energy generator or an or a loose generator until you um, say no, raise your vibration, stand in your power. And realize what's happening and um, you know a lot of people are, are energy vampires without even realizing it even very spiritual people um, those who are operating out of ego and just want to get up and you know do this to be popular and to be accepted you know the same trap as society you know going in a corporate world and wanting to climb the ladder for money or whatever um, they um, 
so loosh is like the energy that gets stolen from you and uh you can actually claim that back by the way if it hasn't been sent off planet or even if it has been sent off planet this is part of something figure and we're figuring out with the implant removal you actually squeeze out the squeeze out the energy once you remove the being psychically and put them in this space when you got all the beings here or all the artificial intelligence or whatever you squeeze out your own energy put it back into a ball of light and transmute it and take it back so that's how we can um, become more powerful but there can, you can actually be pulling energy from other people and not realize it and you've got to be responsible and stop doing that as well and um, it's this fear that you're not going to be able to survive without energy and you can't you can't you end up getting sick you know if mm -hmm. you don't have energy and light you end up manifesting disease yes that's true and meditation helps to realign that back into balance even if Okay, say, say you can't uh, meditate to guided words, just listen to music that vibrates with you and that helps as well. There's different mm -hmm. types of meditation for different people. For me, I cannot listen to self-guided words. It does nothing for me. I try, it just does nothing. So I, I picked spiritually vibrational music that resonates with me and I just meditate like that. I sit or I even lie down in my bed and go into a... Um, meditative trance state and meditate and that raises up my vibrational energies and brings everything back into alignment giving me a boost of energy like new energy source from from the cosmic from earth whatever positive energy so mm -hmm. it rebalances even if you've had your loosh sucked you can either bring it back in or you can get more energy in you can create mm -hmm. more energy so you don't have to be in the cycle of loose sucking. Well, yes. And now that we're all awake and aware that we've been sucked from, sucked, our loose has been sucked from us. We've been sucking loose. Um, <laughs> what, what's the next step as far as awareness? Um, there's this myth that if you give your attention to something that it's going to manifest that um, and that's kind of like a two-way street I mean you have to understand about the transhumanism agenda and about the ET agenda and the false ET agenda the false alien attack all these things that they uh, it's a ridiculous program at this point that you're realizing is unfolding but you have to kind of know what that program is um, in order to make a different choice and to consciously make that choice but some people are saying, um, well, I can't even look at that. I don't even want to talk about that or think about that or look at that. That's ridiculous. Um, and so they, I just want to be love and light. And I just want to sit around and carry a high vibration. And um, none of that is even in my reality if I do not choose it. And while that may work for, for some people, maybe they're here just to carry a high vibration that's untainted and they want to go sequester themselves on an island and they have absolutely no bills to pay and they don't have to have a bank account and they don't have children who are being forced with vaccinations and they don't have to worry about their children going to college they don't have to worry about their rent or their mortgage or anything like that I mean truly uh, most people have those things but well, that's okay if they want to do that but it's really good to inform yourself without attachment, just, you know, like viewing what's happening in the world as an observer and understanding the opponent, which is not really an opponent, but the negative aspect in order to know what you don't want. So as we have the sphere propaganda uh, coming up about WaveX um, and about the economy crashing and eventually about the dollar crashing and the things that we think may unfold unless we have some kind of you know transformation out of this experience based on vibration you know that may occur too but um, probably not yet because we have to do a little bit more work uh, for other people <laughs> yes if we don't want to just take off or I mean it's not like we're leaving anywhere but we don't want to vibrate out of the 
experience until we've done everything we possibly can, you know, um, and, and left plenty of breadcrumbs and clues so that they can pop over and meet us, you know, very soon. So um, we have to just be aware of what's happening so that we can put um, our positive thoughts into what we don't want. And the universe doesn't understand the word don't or not, but let's just rephrase that to say into what we do want, to manifest what we do want because we know we don't want what we don't want. That's why I have a website called howtoexitthematrix.com where you can find more esoteric uh, and occult things and the, find the real un understanding of the black magic used against us to keep us from awakening and all that. And I kind of split that off from N5D because there were a lot of love and lighters on N5D that didn't want to read that on their Facebook page. Some people are really into it because they can observe it as the observer. And it's really fascinating to understand how mathematically Jim, Jim, uh, and sound and, you know, uh, words, how they did all this, sigils, all kinds of stuff, the way that um, our cities are laid out. Um, etymology of words is very fascinating, just different things like that. And the extraterrestrial origins of these things, the archons and things like that. I just found it fascinating, fascinating and I did have to go down that rabbit hole to get a whole uh, picture, the better picture. So for me personally, I did have to focus on that for about eight months. And just recently, about two months ago, uh, I, at the same time, I was focusing on how to get out of it. It's always about vibration. Every bit of it is raising your vibration, and that will help you be more aware and more able to deal and stand in your power and just basically say no and do your um, revoke your contracts that you've made with the beings under duress or under trickery or even if you made a contract and now it's not working in your life and you're aware and sentient enough to say, okay, but I'm done with that. You know, in order for me to move forward, I'm going to have to tear up that contract with you. And just all the different things that we talk about on how to exit the matrix and in 5d, there's so many different aspects of this. That's why, um, and there's a third website called body, mind, soul, spirit.com that talks about the holistic healing part. Um, and how to, um, you know, make better choices in your life to reduce the amount of toxins and GMOs that you're taking in so that you can meet that certain level of vibration that makes you almost immune, almost immune to what's going, what's happening around you because you are literally, when you reach a certain level, you're literally changing, your reality is morphing and changing around you to reflect what's inside of you. It really magically does happen. And so I encourage people to continue to work on their vibration, continue to stay grounded and, and allow those emotions and feelings to come through. Some, some call it the dark night of the soul. It's the period of time where you may get extreme ascension symptoms uh, including, you know, um, uh, aches and pains and headaches and sweats and nausea and dizziness and things like that. And knowing about it keeps you out of fear. Should I run to the hospital if I get heart palpitations? Well, I did that one time. And then after that, I knew after check, had it, having an EKG, there was nothing wrong with my heart. It was basically my heart readjusting to the increase of the earth's heart as she's increasing because uh, we are one. You know, our bodies are made of the same materials and the energetic level has to match in order for us to stay alive. And so if you haven't done it with your vibration, well, you're going to have to have heart, heart palpitations to re sync your heart with earth's heart so um and then just to try to um can't stress it enough be completely responsible for yourself and what comes out of your mouth and we're not perfect yet but we're moving towards perfection being source embodied 
in um, a physical way of experiencing, and that means perfection in all ways, on all emotional, uh, physical, mental, and spiritual, and uh, being who we really are is that, not who we think we are. Exactly, and to each person, perfection is different. You don't have to be perfect, perfect, but you're working towards the perfection of your highest self, your highest being. Um, and going back to the magic, um, you were saying that one word that started with geo, I think it got kind of, it was kind of um, a little bit distorted. What was that word again? Geometric or? Oh, the geometric patterns. Yeah. Um, sigils and uh, are um, created by geometric patterns and symbols that have certain frequency behind them that um, denote a certain frequency. Does that make sense? Um, um, everything um, that we are seeing, like the um, oil companies' um, logos and stuff, are actually um, Satanistic, if you want to use that word, are dark forces putting a, a symbol out there that has a certain frequency that's backed up by a geometric pattern. Uh, and it's just all, it's all subliminal programming to um, keep us in a lower frequency. Oh, that's yes. It, that's all it is. So well, I, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's prevalent. I, I studied magic, Wicca, and symbolism and sigils. And sometimes you really have to do your research to know what a sigil means or just a simple symbol means because you don't want to use satanic symbols in your um, sacred geometry or because some people do use sigils for manifestation of stuff and you can draw your own sigils there there's mm -hmm. learning tools on the internet for how to do that there's magic teachers that can teach you how to do that um and these things have a power of their own they hold certain vibrational energy and so just to be aware of that what you bring in what you bring out is important too. speaking of that um some critics have said that wave x um, being that it has an X in it, X is a symbol of Saturn, which is Satan, so it must be a bad thing. Well, Wave X, from what I understand, Dr. Adkins actually just termed it Wave X because people um, have been talking about Planet X, Nibiru, returning, and maybe um, we're confusing the fact with that the, the energy or the or the light coming from another planet passing by that maybe looks like a comet or looks like a wave or whatever, that it's not actually, we're not actually having Nibiru or Planet X returning, we're having a wave. And so he just merged the two and said, let's just call it Wave X. But perhaps in con more conscious creation of the fear of other people and what they would say <laughs> about an X, maybe we should have named it, you know, why I, Y or Z, you know, but yeah. but I think Z may be like the final wave. It's like Z may shift us. So I mean, we can go ahead and stick with X now. We'll probably have a Y, but I'll be ready for Z very soon. And that's fine. And it's it's been also termed as an electromagnetic gamma frequency shift wave, the long version of it. I mean, everybody calls it something different and that's fine. Whatever that wave does for someone, hopefully it's for the best and it'll boost their energies get them more creative, get them active in the community, open up people's minds to infinite possibilities. That's what this energy is. It's here to help us. It's not here to impede us, despite what people say. Sure, the earth will go through some changes. These cosmic waves do bring change in. So the planet might experience some geothermal activity or something else perhaps more rain, perhaps more storms or whatever, but that's part of the natural cycle anyway. So sometimes it's amplified and mm -hmm. the sun, the sun's energy magnify that as well. So it's, there's all kinds of cosmic events that are happening, planetary alignments. It's not just this one wave. There's a lot more going on. Amplification is a really good point because that's what's going to be happening within us. So if you're, if you're, um, 
high vibrational positive being that's just going to be amplified if you're in a really negative state that's going to be amplified so that's where you know we do have a little bit of more work uh, i don't know how long we're going to have to deal with this but we are going to probably see some chaos you know from the people having their negative thoughts and negative energies amplified and returned to them mirrored back to them as well until they either break um, and give up or they or it affects them so profoundly that they look at us where our world is not falling apart and want to know what we've done and perhaps um, have a literal shift in consciousness with the energies that be get them to begin to question things question everything you know when i when i had my awakening i literally changed my whole consciousness and understanding of my government and the world and the the whole um trap 180 degrees i mean i i didn't ever um like politics and only voted one time and made a mistake. Of course, everyone makes a mistake every time they vote, but it's all about, you know, both political parties are working for the same archon. And <laughs> in, every time you give your vote, you're giving consent to be governed and controlled by that archonic being that's mm -hmm. split up into, um, you know, two people that all the agenda is about uh, control and taking your um, giving your consent to rule you. And so, you know, um, I, as I look back, it, everything was a change of 180 degrees and it totally upset my whole life. And my whole apple cart was just turned over. My whole world changed. And it's, and it's scary. And you have to be brave and, and you need support. So I encourage everyone out there to, you know, get into some kind of group or forum to support others who truly are looking for answers and to get rid of the shills that are there to call people crazy and bring them down and to provide safe space for forums. I think that's one of the biggest things right now that I'm seeing as questions on N5D Facebook group is, um, do you have a forum? Do you have a, a, a place that like-minded people could, could talk? And we used to have a chat room and it got completely infiltrated by negative, negative beings through human beings. And it became a place of attack and we had to shut it down. It was shut down a little over six months ago. And um, it does take somebody in there who can point out in a very respectful way that you're not being responsible for your own thoughts and to please, you know, leave the forum or, you know, change. And, and neither one of us are prepared to do that right now. We just don't have the time. But I totally encourage people who want to provide a safe space for people who are awakening to ask questions and to get people that have had a little experience under their belt with the awakening process and symptoms and raising your vibration to run these forums. I highly suggest that. I mean, a lot of times we've seen traps be set from paid people of the government that are truly there to pose as spiritual people and set up these forums and just suck energy, suck loose, mm -hmm. put false ideas in people's heads. And I don't, you know, you, we just have to keep fighting. We just have to keep um, fighting in a way that's not with boxing gloves, but rising above and providing the platforms and not saying, well, I'm not going to do this because the government's got too many of them out there. I'm not going to do this because there's going to be shills coming. Just own it, take care of it and clean out the trash and, and provide it. I really would like that. And if anybody does provide such a nice space, be sure and let us know so that we can share that information with other people because we're just not prepared to provide that kind of space right now. And even if we don't have forum, forums, we do have our um, informational website. So if people send uh, send their questions to us, um, maybe answer them. Don't just ignore people's questions because people are wondering what's going on. And um, I've received a few questions from my website. That's why I put it up. I put up the information and people want either more clarification on what the info means. And it's not all my info. I don't claim to be an expert. I repost things, giving people um, 
the information where the original source giving people credit where their original source came from i don't claim to be an expert on everything that i know i repost things this is my website is also a database it's a static database mm -hmm. but it's just what i find meaningful to me and what the people could read i post repost and i give credit where credit is due because we do have copyright laws and you have to be mindful of the people who put out the information give them credit but if you do have emails coming in either through the website or the youtube channels that we run if you can answer the question why not help people well and not only that but on a higher level every question that you answer goes into the collective human consciousness for another person to download that information instantly when they begin to open up and be connected so all the answers truly do lie within that consciousness exactly. and so the more that you vocalize it and actually make it so in this reality um, and put that information out there the more it's going to be available for other people kind of like our own internal intranet system mm -hmm. that's how people can have the same um, uh, invention at the same time all around the world different people that have the same invention pop into their head mm -hmm. so we all we all are connected to that so working on that consciousness field it's a grid around the planet there's also a false grid that tries to overlay on top of that and tries to control and steer the consciousness but ignoring that because that's just going to fall apart if you ignore it or there's some workers that actually work to dissolve that grid with light with their love and light and intention but really working on yourself is the very best way to affect that consciousness field because one person standing in the truth and power of who they are and raising their vibration is, is, is multiple times more powerful than one negative person so you know a very small number of people can positively affect that consciousness grid and the hundredth monkey effect then kicks in to where it's like dominoes falling where everybody starts catching on and I think it should have probably happened a little bit faster than it has but we can't judge that time lapse because we have no idea what's been going on on the other side of the veil I mean many people talk about you know the cosmic wars and all this stuff well yes on one level that's occurring but on another level that's just part of the illusion and, and the um, light matrix hologram as well so and everything happens at the same time so how do you differentiate just forget all that stuff I mean it's interesting to hear about just forget about focusing on that instead focusing on yourself and when you're looking for what you can do right now that is the most important thing is self-focus, self-awareness, self-responsibility, self-love, and uh, projecting that kind of thing out, outward rather than anger and fear and hate and sadness and, and uh, blaming and things like that. Exactly. So I guess, I guess we're kind of running out of time here, but is there anything else, any other topic that you wanted to touch on? Yes, I wanted to ask you about the DNA healing and upgrading because you mentioned in one yeah. of your interviews that you're doing this new project and um, what is it and how are you planning to do it? Well, I had a gentleman contact me from Australia that has given me a over 4,000 page PDF document that is um, seems to be um, a magic way of expressing in words what source is and how to embody yourself as source and how to point to every organ and every part of your physical body and say you are source you are perfect you are this and um, it's a very repetitive document which makes me think that it does have a, some powers of magic in it um, and we're talking good magic we're talking manifestation and um, the thing is, it's, it's overwhelmingly that um, I want to share the information with people, and he does feel like that the way that it he it's a channeled material that's taken years to put together from his own internal self channeling, and it um it 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 really hit me as I mean it, one of the things I know that I'm here to do is to perfect my DNA template, you know, to repair it to restore it, to overlay it with a new one, whatever. But this one isn't working. 
um, to dissolve what's been put over it. However, whatever words you want to use, that's what I'm here to do and to help other people to do and to really just put it out there in the field so we can all remember how to do it. But the, I think this document does that in words and, and it's very powerful. Source is perfect. Source is everything. Okay. The human body was actually the, the, the template that we had before we got overlaid with distortions made by energy and emotions and agreement. That we didn't need. It was actually um, empathy, and we never did to age beyond a certain age physically. Um, the temper um, was messed with in the body, which keeps us um, from staying at this age that we can be at our optimum physical. Uh, perfection, which is who we are inside. So there's got to be a way to remember how we used to keep ourselves young in uh, other lifetimes um, because they're happening at the same time. So we need to merge that knowledge and access it within whether it's Atlantis time or on another planet, doesn't matter. We used to live thousands of years and when we're do done with our vehicle, um, we drop the body we have a celebration of life and all of our family members watch us, you know, our source, source essence go off and have another experience somewhere. Sometimes we even put our body in stasis um, and then preserved it and then had we went and did whatever we needed to do outside of time and then came back when we were done or went off on another ship or went on a mission or went, you know, to have another experience for 500 years if we, of Earth time if we wanted to. So it's about remembering through these words trig about, about just how perfect Source is and how everything was created perfectly and got perfectly distorted. And so um, truly there are things that in the physical body that weren't uh, supposed to be and can be corrected. And um, so I'm doing a... I'm doing a bit introductory um, article first with some of the summaries and uh, then just a triggering to remember how we are perfecting our DNA by being source, by being perfect, by being that, anchoring that into our cells, talking to our body, talking to our cells. Then the, this, that's kind of like a beginning level. And then the intermediate, uh, by the way, each, each article will have the 4,000 page PDF because he wants to, the creator of this, wants to put it out there for someone who wants to dive deep into it. Um, so it will have the PDF attached, but basically the intermediate level has more of a summary with maybe even a video um, about um, maybe a PowerPoint presentation, very similar to the one that you did, Elena. And then the third um, level will be a PowerPoint presentation that you can share in a group as a teacher um, about source and perfection and, and applying it to the physical body and your um, emotional body and your, um, your mental body and your spiritual body as well. And um, plus a video series of a panel of experts that I'm putting together that have magically fallen into my lap um, about disseminating the information how we are with the consciousness that's coming to the planet, the waves of magnetic energy. And it's almost like you have to acknowledge and that this is what you wanted. I think we might have lost a little bit of internet there. What yes. I said is that it's almost like you have to yes. acknowledge and say uh, and intend that you want this or that you are this. Not that you want it, but you are this. And so anyway, this is a project I'm working on and I'll have the first article out about this perfected DNA template out in a couple of weeks. 
and then moving very quickly into videotaping my panel with um, people who have come to me resonating with information. Um, even a person that came to me today that's going to be able to take a 4,000 page PDF and summarize it by points because it is, it's written in code and in soul language. So it has no, it has a little bit of organization to it, but it's re very, very repetitive. And that's the way mantras and creation is, is patterns and, and repetition things like fractals and stuff. Yes. So it's very exciting and it's only meant it's not nothing has nothing to do with putting out there and selling it or making money. I'm not holding it to myself. Um, it's just that I don't want somebody to dis to, you know, have the information and discount exactly what it is without some kind of um, explanation or concise summary as to what it's to be used for. I mean, what good is a book if you're going to take it and read it and not know what to use it to apply it for? So um, that's the part that I, I know that I was supposed to work on, and that's why it was given to me. It's available on the Internet, um, but um, I'd like to, to debut it on N5D and the PDF and the internet and everything will be in that article. You can do with it with what you want, but just look forward to an, um, uh, a multi-dimensional understanding of how we can embody source and perfection um, and, and an explanation of panel of, of people brainstorming to try to trigger other people. I want to see the first person um, whether it be that we shift, do that final split and shift in vibration to where we don't have to deal with all that negative, all that deep negativity. Uh, and then we, sh we, you know, it's like uh, maybe a light body transformation, but more internal, you know, maybe not as sensationalized as Star Trek, where we are actually just a glowing light bulb. It may be more like the Christian um, paintings of the past where where they depict Jesus or Mother Mary with a halo you know basically we're seeing their aura uh, it may be that we're want to embody a light body experience but I don't think we're gonna have on be on the same level and as people who want to be the physical body with the aura so mm -hmm. we, we we better like decide what we want <laughs> pretty soon Definitely. Um, but, uh, and a quick question. Um, we were sort of broken up there when you were talking about agreements. What in the beginning when I first asked you about this um, DNA healing and stuff, what was the agreements about? Oh, well, you have to, you know, agree, you have to intend and agree that you um, want to be source um, embodied in a physical body. It's this human DNA template that we're, I don't want to say moving to, but embodying is, um, will not have the capability of having implants inserted. It's like morphing into a new human being. It is very similar to the story I gave you earlier about when the earth does shift into a higher vibration, jumping into your astral body and jumping back into your avatar body on the new earth. However that unfolds, whatever language you want to use, it's very similar to that. But when you jump back into your avatar body, you can create that body to look however you want to. You do have agreements with your family as to what you looked like before. Um, any family members that are there with you, you know, maybe they like the way you look. Your boyfriend, maybe, you know, boyfriend likes the way you look. So how much would you change? You would be able to embody perfection based on what you said your idea of perfection is. And you can also change your agreements with your family if everybody is okay with it and you're not harming anybody. And let's say you wanted to be the blue being from the Pleiades instead of... <laughs> Instead of the person that you are now, if, if, if you can change your agreements and everybody's in agreement that they wouldn't mind seeing you in that, and that actually helps to propel you on another level 
spiritually embodying a body um, on the earth, then maybe we'll move towards that, you know, allowing everybody to choose um, what experience they want to bring to the table. So that would be perfection as well, because source is everything. So um, that's my next project, and I'll be putting more out about that on N5D. I'm very excited about it because it is the next level. I think Sorry, the dog agrees. Dog yeah, I think he's ready. He's ready to probably go out at this point. Yes. To go uh, outside. Yeah, where you mentioned about the agreements that sort of broke up on the internet, I guess it needed to be mentioned again, so I thought I'd ask for clarification. You know, sometimes I find myself... Um, when, when I really speak my truth, I can like blow up electronics or something. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, yesterday's interview was like all glowing green. People were glowing green. I had sunlight lines around my face because we were working through confirmation, confirmation. And the internet picks it up in the video. There's like noise, there's lights, there's interesting stuff that pops in. It's like, okay, well why don't you ask for more information on that? Because it kind of was wobbly. You couldn't hear it in that agreement part, and that was important. So I'm like, okay, ask about it again. It's okay. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's we'll have more about that on N5D, and I'll probably be doing some uh, videos as well. You know, just it's all about uh, remembering. We've got to remember. Um, we should, we should uh, be able to remember everything we need to know that's what source perfection is, is knowing everything right when you need to know it and but still being able to have the the matrix experience if you want it. If you want to be here in a physical body, you're going to have to have the matrix experience. If you don't, if you're done playing the game of matrix of light body uh, creation, of physical creation, manifestation and unmanifestation, then go off and go home you know, back to another planet somewhere where they don't do that and just be a light body being, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to get that far, uh, I think you've got to do this first. Um, embody yourself as source and then you can take off. So that's, exactly. or, that's exciting. Or if you want to be blue in a light body, you can still do that on Earth. You can have a physical body and a light body, be blue back and forth. You can yes. try anything, even on this physical plane. It's possible. Yes, but we still have agreements, I think, with not freaking people out, um, you know. Well, I guess that's what we have to start setting our parameters, you know. How do you think, should people be able to just, you know, let's just say they are, 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 they're a good reptilian and um, they want to be, you know, a 20-foot uh, reptilian on the planet. Well, will that fit in a house? Do we want to change all our houses? I mean, these are all things that we'll have to start thinking about and really kind of come to an agreement of um, what's acceptable as your embodiment of source and perfection. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, honestly, I am here to um, embody a perfected human, human DNA template that looks very similar to the body that I'm in with perfection tweaks back to a certain particular age and when I'm done with this body experience that's when I can pull my soul essence out and put it into another body experience somewhere else or my consciousness uh, whatever so um, these bodies are very unique because as you know they have um, multi uh, race extraterrestrial race DNA in them and they were created and then they were hijacked and they were dumped down so the actual original creation of them is very highly sought after. And, um, you know, even the blue being, that's more of the light body or that's more of a shapeshifter type thing to, to be able to embody that. But everybody wants to embody one of these bodies and maybe make the tweaks to these bodies that more align with our uh, genetics, our home genetics that are within our DNA. Pull more of that genetic out in the body. Yes. than more of the reptilian or the, or the, uh, you know what I mean? So, yes. um, yeah, I do. I've had dreams about it, about being a Andromedan slash Palladian hybrid, like having this light, light blue skin and this long blonde hair with purple, blue, red streaks in it, still being human, just a six foot tall human yes. and just looking slightly more like where my original 
starseed soul spark came from from those um, other planets that uh, and my soul families that I'm part of and I mean a lot of these days people do body modification all the time they have tattoos they okay a person was black now they're white they do skin modification coloring hair coloring anything like pointy ears uh, <laughs> So it's, it, there's a lot of diversity already on this planet. And mm -hmm. I think people, some people wouldn't even blink if I showed up to work being blue. Cause... I think that would be awesome. Well, go ahead and do that. Will you, that way I can show that somebody's figured it out. I'll try. I mean, it's, I've had dreams about it. I've seen myself in that way in the future, quite a bit of time. But the f interesting part is I can switch back to looking like this. If yes. I want. Yes. It's not yes. a one-way ticket to just looking different. You can switch back exactly. and forth. You don't have to be just one image, one way of body shape. Yes. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I just want to thank you for this conversation. It's very enlightening for me, and um, we should do it again sometime. Definitely. Thank you. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And it, it finally, the energies all came together to just being perfect space to hold, to do this and enjoy. Doesn't matter what sounds were in there and what internet disconnection there was. We, we still carried on and we picked up on all of the important things. And you can, like, if, if there is some kind of a energy distortion of the internet, you can just rephrase what was said. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. Make of it what you need. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you. And where can you be found? Which websites? Well, that would be n5d.com. That's the letter I N and the number five and D.com. And that's uh, the main website that I work with Greg. That's Greg Prescott's website. I work with him. And then um, I have three websites how to exit the matrix.com. And that's the esoteric um, type um, going down the rabbit hole of the matrix. And then I have CosmicStarseeds.com where you can find every article that just I've written or every interview that I've either been on or given on radio. Um, it's a kind of like a database conglomeration of all things me. That way it's all in one place. And then MichelleWalling.com is my um, holistic life coaching um, uh, website where you can find out how to book a session with me. Excellent. I will put those up in the YouTube links. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I definitely want to do a second interview or a talk. It doesn't matter. They're both, I think. So thank you, Michelle Walling, for being on the show. And I look okay. forward to seeing you again soon. Okay, Lena. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Bye.